This one's considered a Nantucket. This is a round reed basket, another round reed. And these, this is made out of cane. This is out of the reed like we have talked about. Looking around Bev Larson's home studio in Lafayette, the brooms. you'll soon see that she's a woman of oh, many talents. I've made this one, this one. If I were born today, I would probably have some label attached to me, attention deficit or something like that. This one I call X marks the spot. For more than 30 years, really cool. Bev has been hard at work, mastering a variety of techniques of bygone eras, creating unique and beautiful household items. It's the very first kitchen style broom I made. However, this wasn't exactly Bev's plan. She started her career as an accountant. Then tragedy struck. My daughter was diagnosed when she was eight with um, Hodgkin's and she died when she was nine in October of 1988. In November of 1988, the Y was offering three Wednesday night in a row um, little Christmas baskets. And my son was always at his dad's on Wednesday night, so instead of staying home having a pity party, I signed up for those three classes, and the rest is history. And whenever I go anywhere, I always roll my eyes up and say, be with me on this trip, and look what you started, honey. So that's how I got started. Good comes from everything, and if I had not lost my daughter, I wouldn't be doing any of this. Bev took to basket making quickly, but soon realized she had a problem on her hands. You can only keep so many baskets, so you have to have an outlet to get rid of them. So started making them to sell and getting more creative with them. Bev now teaches classes all over the country, sharing what she's learned along the way and building a community. I love what I'm doing. I love sharing it. You know, I did a, a, a little class with a brownie troop on Sunday afternoon. The joy on those kids' faces when they finish their first basket, that, it's, it's priceless. Bev's baskets are undeniably unique. Often, she incorporates found items like antlers, building her baskets around these irregular objects. I joke on the antlers that they have to talk to you. The antler has to talk to me to tell me what shape the basket's going to be with it, whether it's going to be a handle or whether it's going to be the base or if it's going to be a bowl. Or, and if it doesn't talk to you, it just sits there for a while and sits there and sits there until you know what you're going to do with it. Okay, we have a preference on what stick we put it on today. In the early 2000s, Bev found a second passion, broom making. Employing simple, centuries-old techniques, Bev uses sticks, broom corn, and string to craft sturdy brooms with a surprising amount of variety and beauty. I really like doing the fancy stuff. Um, the wedding brooms, you know, the double brooms, or, and there again, it's the stick has to talk to you. You know, you get a stick and the stick goes, ah, what are you gonna do with me? While baskets and brooms have kept Bev plenty busy, she has somehow managed to pick up a third, slightly more technologically advanced passion. It's gonna be a long sock. Using depression era machines, Bev is now cranking out a steady stream of antique style socks. It's got a lot of large learning curve and it took me a while to master it. And then it took me a while to really fall in love with it. And now it's passion number three. And I just love cranking out socks. Whether it's baskets, brooms, or socks, after three decades of hard work, Bev continues to find a thriving community of people looking for something different. I think that people are going to these old-timey crafts because they're tired of the lifestyle that we're living today. And I'm seeing more and more young people taking up spinning, taking up weaving on looms, taking up, you know, they're taking my classes. They're teaching classes. You know, life, life keeps us going at 100 miles an hour, and we just need to take a minute to chill a little. As for Bev's next passion. I can't afford another passion, so I don't know if there will be a next one. I just love having a passion. I, I think that's important in life. If you have more than one, you're lucky. <laughs>